In this video, we'll mix professional mocap animation with QuickMagic AI, a cheap motion capture solution that might be the best in its class. I'll show you QuickMagic's unique game-changing feature that allowed me to capture a continuous running tracking shot using a single Android phone camera. Using Unreal Engine 5, we will build an entire medieval battle scene around our animation, utilizing some basic chaos physics to create dynamic environmental destruction. And in the end, we'll see how close we can get to our animation using the latest cutting edge AI video generation tools. And the results might surprise you. So for the motion capture I produce for this channel, I use mostly Move Pro, the multi-camera solution from Move AI, which yields great results. However, this comes with a few major caveats. For one, it's expensive, costing $7,000 per year for a license. And the other is that your performances will always be limited to what you can do inside the volume that you set up. So if you wanted to capture a really long running animation, maybe someone running through a battle or two people walking and talking through a complex environment like my last project, you don't have a lot of options other than to run back and forth in your space and chop the animation up or use a treadmill or use an inertial suit all of which come with their own limitations. What would be amazing is if you could track with your actor with a camera, and it would track your movement across the ground in 3D space, giving you basically an unlimited volume size and decent fidelity of the animation because the camera can stay close to the actor the whole time. And that's where Quick Magic AI enters the picture. Now, this is easily the best single camera mocap solution I have used or seen. I've tried Move One from Move AI, and the results were pretty good when it came to the general spatial accuracy of the capture. However, it seemed to suffer from jitteriness and foot sliding. I've also tried Radical Motion, which was really good and really mitigated the jitters, but still had pretty bad foot sliding and kind of weird posture. The free Rococo Vision solution was pretty terrible, although I haven't really tested it that much. Quick Magic, however, seemed to be decently smooth and most importantly, had great foot locking, meaning the feet stayed firm on the ground and didn't slide when they weren't supposed to. And what really caught my eye was that it could compensate for a moving camera, keeping the subject anchored in space accurately. This made me think that this could be a potential solution to capturing big movements over large distances that couldn't be captured easily in a stationary volume. I wanted to make a video that I could only make if I had this feature. So I thought of a continuous tracking shot following a guy running. What would he be running from? I don't know, but I figured it would be a giant monster or something. At first, I thought it would make more sense to try tracking with my motion from the side, getting a clear view of how fast I was going and how much ground I was covering. Uh, this, however, didn't seem to work as intended, and as you can see, makes it look a little like I was running on a treadmill. What did end up working was filming while following me from behind or from the front. My friend filmed me with my Samsung Note 23 Ultra while we ran about 50 meters, or roughly half a football field, as I pretended to dodge around objects running from something big chasing me. Also, we are filming on the camera's neutral main lens to avoid any distortion you might get from a wide angle lens. My friend kept the camera as steady as possible and kept me in frame the whole time. Also, the camera needs to stay pointed in the same general direction for this to work. If you try to orbit around your subject, it rotates the character, which is not what you want. I then brought the footage into QuickMagic's browser-based platform. So here we are at this perfectly normal, unremarkable login screen for QuickMagic AI. If you are greeted by this lovely young lady, you know you've come to the right place. So you just click on AI mocap over here on the left and drag your clip into the window. You can trim your clip if you want, and here I did a T-pose, which isn't necessary, but uh, you'll wanna do that for the best results. It will then detect the subject, and you just drag the skeleton you wanna use from the selection on the right. I chose the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin. You're then given some options for what you wanna track, and based on what you choose, it will charge you the corresponding amount of credits, which in this case is 28 V-coins, which seems to equal roughly a dollar and 86 cents. 
So for this, I want to track full body and hands, T-pose for starting frame, moving camera, and export format on Real 4. Then it processes, and it's as easy as that. You can see here it seems to be working as intended, so we will download the animation and bring it into Unreal Engine 5. So when you import, just make sure you have the skeleton set to none and it will bring it right in. I wanna show really quickly the entire raw animation and video side by side, so you can see how good the capture was. I mean, this looks really good. It's not perfect. There are a few moments where it looks like I'm shuffling a little, but I'm also kind of running weird. Uh, I was a little slow since it was icy out and I was hamming up the exaggerated movements. I'm pretty sure the actual distance covered isn't accurately captured by the animation, but it is good enough for a starting point. So really quickly, I'll show you how I can get this animation retargeted into a sequence and onto a metahuman so we can make any adjustments to the animation and add cameras and everything else. So just right click on your animation and go up here to retarget animation, which will bring up this window. Double click on the animation over here in the list and then select the target skeletal mesh, which can be any of the metahuman skeletons. And in our case, I'll just select the male tall normal weight. Uh, then just click export animation, select a folder and it's retargeted as easy as that. Now we wanna create a new level sequence up here and then assuming you've added a metahuman to your project, you drag them into your level and with the metahuman selected, go to your sequence, click the add menu, go to actor to sequence and select the metahuman you have selected. Now the metahuman is in your sequence, but before we do anything, we wanna make sure the LOD isn't going to change on us. So with your metahuman selected, go to its details panel and in the hierarchy, scroll down to the LOD sync and under forced LOD, change it from negative one to zero, which will lock your metahuman into the highest LOD, no matter where your camera is. This is important for using things like custom clothing, which you will see in a bit. Now to apply the animation, you will wanna delete the control rigs from the body and face tracks, then just click the plus sign and go to animation and find the animation you wanna apply. And there you go. You now have the animation fully retargeted and applied to a metahuman. Now, I went pretty quickly here and didn't do a very deep dive on this process. And that's because I have a very comprehensive step-by-step -step tutorial right here on this channel that will show you in great detail the workflow for doing full face and body performance capture with metahumans. It is designed to be as accessible as possible and uses the cheapest tools available. Now, the tutorial uses move one for the body capture, but you can really swap that part of the tutorial out with this one and use quick magic instead. Once you have the animation captured and imported into Unreal, the process is exactly the same for cleaning up the animation, using MetaHuman Animator for the face, building the environment, etc. So stay tuned for an updated version of the tutorial, which will likely feature quick magic. Now, as you can see, I recorded this wearing a Rococo head rig to see if quick magic would work while doing face capture as well. Uh, I didn't see too much of a problem with the head tracking, which is great and means you could probably use this for full performance capture. I won't go over the process for using MetaHuman Animator since that is covered in the tutorial I mentioned, but I wanted to show that it is possible. Okay, so on to building the scene itself. I decided to go with a medieval battle scene since the assets I had on hand seemed to fit this idea the best. I used this awesome castle, which has this great bridge I could have the guy running on. I also used the medieval armor pack from Polyphoria, which I have used multiple times in my past videos, as well as the modular medieval NPC version two, which has all these amazing high quality outfits, which all fit metahumans right out of the box. And I decided to use the king outfit since I just love the cloth physics on the cape and the tunic, all of which just work and uh, really added to the animation itself. I decided having giant explosions in the background all around would be really cool. Um, and since this castle is this large stone structure, I figured I could get away with some basic destruction without having to get too detailed. Now, 
I just wanna say this is definitely not meant to be a tutorial on Unreal Engine's Chaos Physics Engine. Chaos is super powerful and you can get some amazing results if you know what you're doing, but you're definitely opening up a can of worms that will add a lot of complexity to the shot. I have tried a few times to do a video on chaos destruction, including using the vehicles from the Matrix demo, but I always seem to run into some bugs or hiccups in the workflow, and it ends up costing me days trying to figure it out. Uh, by the way, if anyone has had success using the vehicle destruction from the Matrix demo in Sequencer, I really wanna hear from you. So please consider stopping by the Discord or commenting below. I will definitely be making a comprehensive tutorial in the future that shows how to use chaos physics and destruction in cinematics. For now, I will show you the really basic destruction I used for this scene. And if you wanna know more about how to do chaos destruction like this properly, I found this one tutorial by Praj Prad, uh, unfortunately after I had done a lot of the work in the scene already, um, which explains how to do this in a much more detailed and comprehensive way. But if you wanna just mess around and have some fun, what I explain here should get you started quickly and easily. So you start by selecting the static mesh you wanna destroy, and up here in this dropdown, you wanna change from selection mode to fracture mode. Then you select the type of fracture you want. In my case, I chose cluster, then click new, and select a folder to save your new geometry collection to. You can play with the settings to change how many fragments you want, and then just click fracture. You can then play with the explode amount to see the different fragments. And I just did that to a few different sections of the castle. Then you can see here I am moving these yellow volumes around, which are called anchor fields, which you can find by searching your engine content. And these are adding constraints to the fractured sections, so the entire thing doesn't just break apart as soon as it receives any impact or damage. I'm then assigning the anchor fields to their respective geometry collections over in the geometry collection details panel under initialization field. Now, in order to specify when and where exactly I want the explosions to happen, I add these pink orbs, which are called bomb fields and are also found by searching your engine content folder. I then place them intersecting with the meshes I want destroyed. And here you can see I am cross-referencing a render of the shot in Adobe Premiere, where I'm checking the timing of the camera to see where it is pointing at what time, so I know when the explosion is supposed to happen. Then I set the delay in the field's detail panel so it will activate exactly when I want. Also, it seems that the scale of the field is one factor that determines how powerful the effect actually is. So. Uh, I'm setting the minimum and maximum scale to a certain number and making them the same, so there is no variation when I run the simulation. The fields are then added to the sequencers just so I can make them hidden in the render. Now, the way I did this, the engine runs a new simulation every time I do a render. And even though I have set the physics to have as little variation as possible, the pieces will still move a little differently every time. This makes such a long and complex shot very difficult since in one render it might look great, but in the next, a huge piece lands right in front of the camera and ruins the shot. And of course, every time you add a new element, like a character, a prop, or another explosion, it can cause unpredictable effects, which can make it hard to art direct your scenes. So you can see that I didn't even assign a material for the interior of the rubble, so it just has this broken stretched texture over it. Um, there are even some weird inside out normals or something, and you can see through the backs of some of the geometry. Uh, but the tutorial by Projprod I mentioned earlier seems to cover all of this in detail. So then I just added some Niagara particle explosions to the impact areas and set their activation time in the sequencer. My attempt at creating cannonball contrails really just ended up looking like rockets, but I figured whatever, it looks awesome. Maybe it's a trailer for Kingmakers 2 Cruise Missile Crusade. To add some more production value and make it feel a little more like a battle, I added some background characters. And these were all metahumans, and they're all using either the medieval armor or modular medieval NPC version 2 clothing from Polyphoria. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not claiming I used quick magic for the animations in the background characters. Um, I used a few different animation packs, like this pirate mocap, 
uh, for the sword fighting animation and these animations from the Reillusion Run For Your Life pack, which are pretty great quality. Okay, with all that said, let's take a look at the final tracking shot. Okay, thanks for watching. So for this little test, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, now, since the purpose of this video was to make a continuous tracking shot, I didn't cut in any shots of any of the background characters. So to spice it up a little, I just rendered out a few shots to get a little more juice for the squeeze, so to speak. It really gets the imagination going for some cool battle scenes that could be done using this tech. Um, and if you wanna see another battle scene I've made in Unreal Engine, uh, using a lot of the same medieval clothing assets and metahumans, I highly suggest checking out this video I made of a historic naval battle in the 1500s. All right, so before ending this video, which has gotten way longer than I expected, I wanted to see if it was possible to get a similar shot using generative AI. So I upgraded to ChatGPT Pro to really get more familiar with these video generating tools, uh, as this gives the best access to OpenAI's newest video model, Sora. Anyway, um, let's see if we can prompt something similar into existence. Um, okay, and admittedly, if there was a subreddit for prompt gore, this would be a top post, but I tried to be as descriptive as possible. So uh, I did a few different lengths of the video qualities. Uh, I started with 480p since that allowed for the longest generation, which is 20 seconds. And I got these. <laughs> so. Obviously, I didn't get the memo on a continuous tracking shot or adhering to our perceptions of 3D space, kind of all over the place. Um, I do love this surfing debris shot and how he just morphs into several of himself. Um, and this one, there are definitely some interesting things happening. It actually looks a bit like our shot, but for some reason he's running backwards, probably because I mentioned uh, running backwards in the prompt. It seems to have a hard time with spatial continuity, but I love the part where he turns around and we see his face. Here's where things start to surprise me a little. I mean, this obviously looks like a game of some kind, and I ended up getting a few generations that looked like this. Here, the debris looks a lot like Unreal Engine 3 destruction physics or something. Um, I tried shortening and simplifying the prompt, and this is what I got, which really isn't much better. I can't really say that I'm impressed, but admittedly, text to video will never be as precise as actually building your own animation. At least, not for not for now. So, my thoughts on AI and art and the ethics of how the models are trained are that my thoughts don't actually matter at all. Um, AI is going to do its thing regardless of how I feel about it. And as someone who works in media and art and content creation, it is extremely important to stay up to date on these tools in order to stay relevant and to leverage them in the best ways possible. And since you're watching this channel, I assume you see Unreal Engine as a means to an end, which is to create the visions you have in your head for storytelling, educating, reenacting history, et cetera. So I think it's important to stay agnostic to the tool that is doing the actual rendering of your visions. Uh, so I plan to keep this channel fully focused on Unreal Engine, especially as a filmmaking and storytelling tool, and especially focused on metahumans and performance capture. But I do plan to see how these AI tools can be incorporated into the workflow. Okay, thanks for watching to the end. If you found this interesting or entertaining or helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, we also have a Discord community, link in the description, so come on by to discuss filmmaking in Unreal Engine. And uh, we even have people using Quick Magic already. Here's an animation from one of our community members, Ally. All right, my name is Charlie, and I will see you in the next one.